those seeking the Lord, welcome back or for the first time to Is God For or Against Me, where nothing that is biblical is taboo. All right. So I recently had an article come across my desk, that desk being actual Facebook, where the article was titled Church Leader Mauled by Lion After Trying to Prove God Would Intervene. Before I even get into this article, immediately, there already sounds like there are immediate immediate issues just with this guy doing this. So, without getting into the article just yet, because I've already read the article, I want to go ahead and get into some scriptures first. Some scriptures that immediately, when I saw this, that uh, scriptures just immediately came to me that showed me that this was a huge no-no. The first scripture that I actually want to go to is actually going to come from Deuteronomy, and this was when... The Lord thy God was actually talking to, I believe it was the Israelites in this scripture. Okay, and this is Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 16, and I am looking at. We're starting at verse 10. And it shall be when the Lord thy God shall have brought thee into the land, which he sware unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give thee great and goodly cities, which thou buildest not, and houses full of all good things, which thou fillest not, and wells did, which thou didst not. So what's, what God is explaining, and I believe he's talking to the Israelites. I have to go back up a little bit. Yeah, and it says in verse 4, he's talking to the Israelites, hero Israel. He's letting them know that he's providing for them, that they didn't do a thing. They had nothing to do, cannot take full credit, any credit at all for the prosperity that they're about to experience, which is important. He's immediately dividing and making the differentiation between their efforts and his efforts, which obviously will not compare. So it's, let me continue to read. Houses full of all good things, which thou fillest not, and wells dig, which thou didst not, vineyards and olive trees, which thou plantest not, and when thou shalt have eaten it be full, then beware, lest thou forget the Lord, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt. So when they're experiencing, when God blesses you and you're experiencing prosperity, he warns them, don't forget about me. I'm the one that's responsible for your peace, your, your well-being, your experiences that you're going to have your good experiences your success in the midst of that do not forget because we, we all know even if you're not a christian you know that you tend to be a little successful you experience this high level of comfort we tend to forget about god we tend to go ahead and like oh i'm good i don't need anything i have no worries or no concerns why do i need to help anybody we tend to have this laziness and this complacency come over us and he's warning against that but let's keep going then beware lest thou forget the Lord which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God and serve him and shalt swear by his name. Ye shall not go after other gods of the gods of people which are round about you. For the Lord thy God is a jealous God among you. So let me go ahead and go down. Ye shall not tempt the Lord your God as ye tempted him in Massa. Okay. Now. The further verses don't go off into elaborate why we shouldn't tempt the Lord thy God, but we already know that this is this is a bad deal. But this being Old Testament scripture, let's go ahead and let's see this scripture put into action by the Son of God, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ Himself. So let's go to Matthew four, okay, verse seven. And this is when Satan took when Jesus went into the wilderness and Satan tempted him. Okay, and Satan was presenting him with all these challenges, these things, and so for example, if we look at verse 3 let's see here and the tempter came and said unto him and i'm looking from the amplified bible this time because i understand that the dows and the d's and the, the old scriptorial language can be confusing and lost on some people so i'm looking at amplified where it kind of gives you the best of both worlds and the tempter came and said to him if you are the son of god command that these stones become bread but jesus replied it is written forever remains written man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that comes out of the mouth of god then we go down here to verse seven okay um but not before satan is tempting jesus christ with you know then the devil took him up to the holy city and placed him on a pinnacle the highest point and see that's the thing with the amplifier it explains certain pieces of this scripture so you can understand the context and he said mockingly to him if you are the son of god throw yourself down for it is written he will command his angels concerning you to serve care for and protect and watch over you and they will lift you up on their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone so satan is cleverly mentioning referencing word to jesus christ trying to of course get one in over on him he's saying it in a way to where it actually sounds correct he's saying it in a way where it actually sounds correct but there's a detail that he's not that he's strategically not placing here and jesus christ exploits that detail jesus said unto him 
On the other hand, it is written and forever remains written, you shall not test the Lord your God. And that is exactly what is going on here. He's telling him, hey, I will. if you if you really are the son of God, you should be able to jump off and God will save you. No problem at all. Like it, It's written here. You know, God's not going to do something that's not in his word. Come on, it's written here, Jesus. Let's, just jump off. You'll, you'll be saved. You can command angels and anything that happens, God will provide. He'll, the angels will carry you up. You are the son. And he's saying all these things. And we have to really be careful with people when they come with, when they know something, they have full knowledge about something. And they, they have so much knowledge of it that they're able to manipulate it in a way to where it sounds still convincing and it sounds correct. And if you're not well versed in studying, studying the word on your own to show yourself approved, you can get caught up in this as well. So that's that's the key thing. So leading into these scriptures, let's go ahead and go down to the first paragraph. A Christian church leader tried to prove that the Lord would step forward and come to his rescue and save him. Recently, when he went up against a lion, things did not go as planned, and the church leader had his buttocks and arm all by the lion when he ran towards the pride to try to prove that the Lord had power over animals in the wild. That That's no way to prove God's power, unless you're being led, and that's the hard thing. This goes back to... The actual conditions of the man's heart. That's the biggest thing that I'm actually taking away from this article. I don't really know a person's heart. I'm not God. You know, people can only show you what's actually on their heart based on their actions. And the Lord can reveal to you through the Holy Ghost the true intentions of, of what of why this person is doing something for you. It could be revealed in actions um, later on down the line because there's been times to where you know, somebody has done something for me and then later on I actually it's revealed to me the actual reasons why versus the, the initial reason why I actually thought they did it for me. So I don't know what's on this guy's heart. Yeah, obviously if you read this article, if you're not well if you're not versed, if you don't have any scripture, you don't you haven't studied any word, haven't been taught properly, you would easily just think that this man was just his heart was in the right place right place. He was just trying to do right by the the Lord. And many, maybe non Christians would just think he's just naturally crazy. Let's keep reading. Zion Christian Church prophet Alec Dwayne, I'm just going to say Dwayne because I'm not even sure if I'm pronouncing his name. Sounds like the end is silent. But anyway, was viciously attacked by the lion during a safari trip. The man wanted to prove to the church members with him that God would save him. I'm taking a long pause right now because he wanted to prove to his church members that God would save him. Let's continue to read. The man went into a trance and began to speak in many different languages and then started to run towards the pride of lions that were eaten in Impala in the Kruger National Park in South Africa. The man started approaching the pack very quickly and of course they wanted to protect their kill or they saw him as prey. As the man charged up to them, the pride groped him up and attacked. The lions chased him before one of them bit down on his buttocks. Dwayne said that he did not have any idea about what came over him, but said that humans were given dominion over all of the earth's creatures. So I'm going to stop right there because that is a very true statement in the book of Genesis. It says that, you know, God created man and, and when he created man, he gave us authority and dominion to rule over the creatures of the earth. But rule and dominion, that those words have to be rightfully interpreted. OK, those words have to be rightfully interpreted. We're talking about ruling dominion doesn't mean abuse, but to care for to to properly maintain, to make sure that they're domesticating the land rightly is just good things when it comes to those words of rule and, and dominion. You know, even when in other scriptures where it talks about, you know, the husband shall rule over his wife, that rule doesn't mean it doesn't mean like he should abuse her or he's he's the, you know, he's the boss. That's not what that means. OK. When we're talking about rule, he's responsible. He has certain responsibilities that he has to answer to the Lord Jesus Christ for and being a leader over the wife and properly guiding her, not being a boss, not being this a big authoritative figure. You do as I say. It's the same way with the animals. OK, you know, we're not we're not to worship animals and to think that animals have um, a higher level of importance, even though some people may act like that, than humans actually do. He, animals do not have spirits. They, where they, God didn't breathe in their nostrils and receive the spirit of God like we have. And many people just they completely they they get so emotionally tied to animals and they just you know they start thinking that they're more important than humans and humans are just so destructive and you know it is honestly if everybody just accepted Jesus Christ i personally believe the world would be a better place but i digress this isn't to upset any you know animal rights activists or anything it's to actually just shed light from a biblical standpoint our positions 
and roles in terms of where we're at and, and how we need to where animals are at and how we need to actually treat them. But this part right here where it says he was in a trance, really concerning. And actually, I have a scripture for that, too, because this part right here just reminded me of what exactly this person was going through you know, scripturally based. So uh, one event that actually was reminded is, was in Acts chapter 16. I'm using Amplified Bible again. So we're going to scroll down to verse 16. And this title right here, this is the Amplified. So I'm going to read this whole story. A woman named Lydia from the city of, let me see if I can get rid of that. Okay, no, I cannot. Okay. All right. So if I highlight, it's just going to show up, but it's okay. A woman named Lydia from the city of Thyatira, a dealer in purple fabrics who was already a worshiper of God listened to us and the Lord opened her heart to pay attention and to respond to the things said by Paul. And when she was baptized along with her household, she pleaded with us saying, if you have judged me and decided that I'm faithful to the Lord, a true believer, come to my house and stay. And she persuaded us. It happened that as we were on our way to the place of prayer, we were met by a slave girl who had a spirit of divination, that is, a demonic spirit claiming to foretell the future and discover hidden knowledge. And she brought her owners a good profit by fortune telling. She followed after Paul and she followed after Paul and us and kept screaming and shouting, These men are servants of the Most High God. They are proclaiming to you the way of salvation. She continued doing this for several days. Then Paul, being greatly annoyed and worn out, turned and said to the spirit inside of her, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ as his representative to come out of her. And it came out at that very moment. And then after that, but when her owners saw that their hope of profit was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged him before the authorities in the marketplace. Now, actually, the two, the, the, me referencing this scripture, this situation, and going back to the situation that, you know, Jesus Christ actually had with Satan, where he had to actually rebuke the devil and refuse and, and use his own power to get through all that confounding language. That it shows that evil spirits, evil spirits, okay, you have to ask yourself, what type of influence are you under? If you know for certain that you, 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 everything that Jesus Christ can even stand for, you hate it, you detest it, you haven't even accepted the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit into your life, you have to ask yourself, like, what, what sort of influence, spiritual influence are you under? And you could just be under influence of yourself being ruled by your own flesh, your own way of thinking, your own mentality, but there are outside entities that you can allow in that could be, you know, familiar spirit, whatever the case may be, and I don't have time to go into it in this video, but you have to ask yourself, what type of influence are you under? And sometimes where you're doing certain good things, you know, you could be empowered by something. You, you could be your own. It could be your own skill. It could be your own ability that the Lord has blessed you with. But if you don't acknowledge it as a, a talent that God has given you, you just think that you're just doing it on your own. You make this happen for yourself, kind of the way that Tay Diggs sounded in The Best Man when he was talking to uh, Morris Chestnut. You know, his whole thing was he makes this happen. I make this happen. I, I work hard and I do all of this. You know, I mean, th even throughout your hard work, I mean, you, you, you still need some sort of like supernatural protection because the unexpected can happen as way beyond your control. We don't have full control in this life as we would like to believe that we do. Anything unexpected could happen. And, you know, well, well, who are you serving? If you're serving yourself, then, yeah, you're just out here just kind of floundering. But, you know, the point is this, is that Satan was offering to give Jesus this wonderful earthly things. And this demonic spirit empowered this woman to do something that was supernatural that, you know, was being taken advantage of by some other, some greedy guys in order to make a profit. So it was like this woman was just kind of, you know, victimized. She was just a, a casualty of a circumstance because it seems like the demonic entity was already familiar with what these guys wanted. So that demonic entity flaunted to her and empowered her to do these fortune tellings. And it was just, it was, it was a match made in, in, in heavenly hell. That's, that's what it was. So the biggest takeaway from this article I'm getting ready to stop talking. I'm going to let y'all read the rest of it. Um, man realized Lord was not going to save him and he tried running away. So I'll let you guys read the rest of the article. But this was an opportunity to actually bring two scriptorial things up. One, let's learn from this. Do not test God under any circumstances. That sounds like that should be a very logical thing to do, but it's not. It's, it's not. 
Okay, if you're an unbeliever, true, and you're totally just a full blown, you know, went through maybe even something bad. I hate God, or you just don't believe. You're a full blown atheist, and you don't see any reason to, to believe in God. Even you have to be careful with, you know, trying to to, to test to prove that there is an existence of of God because it's it's just, it's not going to end well. It's it's just not. It's it's just not, you know, and if you're doing things that's outside of scripture, you're removing yourself from the actual hedge of protection that you should have, especially if you're calling yourself a Christian and Christ is protecting you. When you do things outside of scripture, you're removing yourself outside of that hedge of protection by entering sin because you tempting God like this, you're entering sinful territory. And I'm pretty sure that's what happened to this man. You know, he, he was sinning. It may not seem, this may not seem like a sin. It may seem like his heart was in a good place, but he, you know, he disobeyed scripture. And the biggest telling thing that's evidential here is the fact that it said that he felt like the man went into a trance and began to speak in many different languages. And many people may say he was speaking in tongues. That's what he was doing. He was being blessed by the power of God to speak in tongues. And God was just being contradictory because he gave him the power to speak in tongues and he didn't protect him. That's not the case at all. That's not this man stepped right outside of scripture. I believe I personally believe just looking at this. And it also says here, too, that. They did not have any idea about what came over. He even mentioned and confessed he didn't have any idea what came over him. Um, anytime that I'm led by the Spirit of God, I'm very much aware. And I don't go into these mystical trances and I don't know what's happening. You know, there, there's been times to where you get so, you know, indwelt in the Spirit and you're, you know, you get so indwelt in the Spirit that you're enjoying the presence of God, the glory of God, and you realize that after you've enjoyed that, that, you know, your, your, your body physically may be a little exhausted, you know, after just experiencing that, but ne never once do you just be like, oh, I don't know what, I don't know what happened, even in a situation in the Bible where the, the um, eunuch that was actually, you know, being, I think it was Paul, or or Peter, something like that. I think it was Peter that actually came and saw him on the side of the road and baptized him. And then, you know, Peter just immediately disappeared, was, you know, um, transliterated from saying that word correctly to another location. I'm pretty sure he knew what was going on. It just wasn't this, you know, oh, I fainted and, you know, what happened? I, I don't know where I'm at. It wasn't that sort of experience. So, but in any case, comment below. Let me Let me end this with a question. Do you agree or disagree with me about this man's, do you believe that he was under some sort of maybe demonic influence going into this whole entire thing and trying to prove it? It's, do you think his heart was in the right place, you know, when he was trying to prove God's power? Or do you maybe think that he may have actually been taken advantage of? you know, trying to use the glory of God to get glory for himself that, you know, showing that God is all powerful and, and people, maybe it was on his heart that he wanted that credit, you know, and, and just using God's glory as an excuse. Once he got some adora 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 adoration and admiration from his church followers. All right. So those are some good questions to add to, that I want to ask. So leave a comment below trying to answer them and we'll go from there. Thanks for watching the video. See y'all in the next one. God bless y'all. But wait, follow these next steps. One, click the link in the description. Two, become an email subscriber. Three, and receive your free reward of the audiobook and PDF of a very controversial story and future content exclusive only for Is God for or Against Me email subscribers.